And then it's awesome. Do the face have swelling inside, or is this? Little, the, little, um, what's it like? Uh, I don't know, it, black blueberries almost. It's real small. Oh, really? So the whole thing is edible? It's edible. It's edible. It's like it tastes very good. Um, so sassafras, this is my favorite tree, so I have to talk about it. Um, this is one that I worked very, very hard to, to find in Kentucky. Um, not because it was hard to find, it was a testing site where they were trying to figure out if um, there was, if they did controlled birds, what would grow. And they were very excited because all they came back was sassafras. And so, oh, we know this place where all the sassafras is. But it would grow to about this high, and then it would die. So that didn't work out as planned. That was kind of exciting because there was little baby sassafras everywhere. Um, but it was just a national forest experiment site. The sassafras, I grew up with sassafras everywhere that I lived, um, and then it grows kind of Illinois all the way over to West Virginia and then down, but not as far as Florida, you get kind of the South Carolina and Georgia. Um, so if you could kind of imagine the climate of this place, the glaciers, when they came down, they came all the way down to the north end of Florida. So everything flora and fauna of Florida is different. <laughs> Not the same as the rest. Everything else above that has more of a northern temperate climate. So sassafras doesn't go that far south. Sassafras, as I mentioned, was one of the plants that the um, incoming uh, ethnic groups uh, adapted to really well. The inner bark of a, a fresh sassafras bark is very mucilaginous. If you, if you powder it, it's called bakai you know? Uh, you know? Um, and that's what you would add to make gumbo as well, and you could add to make gumbo. Um, it's a great okra alternative, although now we have plenty of okra, but um, so it's not used as much anymore. But that, the bark was used for cooking. Um, the outer bark of the roots has the traditional two ear scent to it, and flavor. Um, it, it, if you tasted it just in its by itself, it's going to be bitter as well. So it's going to smell like root beer, but not. Our idea of root beer has changed because of the root beer brand, A and W. But yeah, that's not root beer. But so our idea of root beer is uh, brown sugar and caramel color now. But then it was house of cats. So it smells like root beer. Um, it tastes a little like root beer. It's very drying and then bitter as well. And if you if you have a European philosophy healing system. Anything that's bitter and drying is going to be blood cleansing. So they used it uh, as did the Cherokee for um, what they would call blood building. Now remember I said we have low blood islands. That's where this blood building term came from is that we are somehow changing the blood which didn't mean truly blood it meant the system of high blood low blood. So we would we're building blood, the blood is deficient somehow. Um, and usually what that means is not how we think of it, like nutritional deficiency. Usually what that meant was that we um, did not metabolize well. If you don't metabolize your food well, you then um, have your pale, um, you might have swelling, you might have what we would probably eventually describe as an iron deficiency or something like that. Um, but it could be any metabol metabolism error or um, deficiency, so your organ systems are basically congested and clogged in some way. And that was the idea that when you use a blood cleanser, it would help clear that out, dry up any excess mucus, and um, have enough nutrients to replenish your blood. And then you have, it's, it's a very it's a cinnamon red relative, so it's very warming and also improves your circulation. So if you're feeling a pulse that's kind of low uh, or deeper, and you gave sassafras, like any other spicy herb, it's going to rise a little bit so you don't need to fill the blood. We interpret it tiny differently now, but that's what they meant. Also, it was described as an alternative, which is a word for metabolism. So that was the link. It's called sassafras, which was a complete butcher of the Spanish name sassafrage, um, which is a botanical term. That, nothing in the history in the name is just a mispronunciation of the kind of term. Do they always look like the uh, fig trees? Do they have the same kind of texture or, or the, the shape at least looks like the fig tree? You know, the, the fig tree is a little glossier and thicker. Um, there is one of the leaves, 
looks like a big tree. But the unique thing about the snapgrass tree is it has three different leaf shapes. It has the elliptical leaf shape, a mitten leaf shape, and then a hand leaf shape. So that's always going to be your snapgrass. You'll know what you by that. The bark is reddish um, brown. And then, of course, all you have to do is scratch the surface of the darker bark, either the root or the lower bark, and you'll smell it here. The new tip, however, like this one, if I scratch the new tip bark, it smells like limes. I, some people say fruit loops, but I say limes. 